Hey, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk about 10 Stephen King short stories that I found particularly disturbing. Um, so I'm not talking about full-length novels. I'm not talking about novellas. I guess novellas are considered somewhere in between a short story and a full-length novel. So uh, basically the four stories from different seasons would be novellas like The Body and Apt Pupil. So those are I'm not including in this video. I'm just talking about short stories alone here and 10 particular ones that I found very disturbing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So before I get going here, just a quick little disclaimer. This isn't a top 10 list. This isn't ranked in any order. Just a list of 10 short stories that, you know, I found were, were pretty good and pretty disturbing. So the first one is the story N from Just After Sunset. Um, this was a very Lovecraftian type story. Um, cosmic horror, if you want to put it that way. Uh, so basically, it revolves around Sheila, who is kind of investigating, or I believe she's writing a letter about her brother's suicide. Her brother was a psychiatrist who uh, was really wrapped up in one of his cases where um, one of his patients was really basically OCD. He was obsessed with um, this figuration of rocks in this open field. And he claimed it was basically like a doorway to another world or another dimension. And um, basically it's like one, it's like a constant cycle. It, this, this formation of rocks is grabs a victim and, and makes them obsessed with it to the point where um, they end up committing suicide. Um, so, you know, she is talking about her brother. Um, and then, you know, it, it kind of ends with her death and, and her, the girl she was writing the letter to kind of getting wrapped up in the same loop. Um, you know, anything like that, that's, uh, that's kind of like an, an eternity of, uh, of a never ending cycle is, is always disturbing to me. Uh, it's a really good story. It's, it's pretty short. I believe it's only like 50 or 60 pages or something like that. So um, really good story. Uh, if you haven't read it, check it out. So number two is from the short story collection Skeleton Crew, and it's called The Raft. Um, this is a fun story. Uh, pretty cool. I mean, it's about a bunch of teenagers who decide one day to drive up to, uh, I believe it's a friend's cottage or something like that. Um, take a swim out in the lake one night and, um, you know, swim out to the floating raft they've got out in the middle of the lake and just kind of hang out. Uh, seems pretty innocent at the start. Uh, they get out there and then uh, once they're out there, they're tormented by this, I guess, alien life form that's kind of like, looks like a, a an oil slick. Um, you know, not really much to it other than that. Um, just looks like an oil slick on the water and uh, one by one it starts tormenting them and it starts killing them grabbing one pulling it into the water you know coming up through the floorboards it's um it's pretty crazy uh they're kind of just stranded out there and the fact that they're stranded out there and they can see the shore the shore is right there um would be pretty frustrating and i'm sure it was frustrating for these characters um so yeah it's it's a fun story uh survival horror in a very uh small sense i guess um, but yes, that's a, that's one you should check out for sure in Skeleton Crew. So sticking with Skeleton Crew for number three, I want to talk about the story, The Jaunt. Um, a lot of people know this story uh, that are familiar with King. This one is very disturbing. Uh, so basically in the future, humans develop a technology to travel through the solar system and colonize the solar system by um, traveling great distances um, fast uh, through a process called the jaunt. In order to do it, they have to get put under. Um, now, there were a few humans that that weren't put under and, um, and went through the jaunt conscious, and it ended up really messing them up, basically. Um, they weren't coming out of it sane um, at all. So uh, basically, our story follows a family and as the dad is telling him about the jaunt and, and what it may do and why they go under, the kid is very curious and he ends up holding his breath when they're administering the gas to put everybody under. Uh, and in doing so, he goes through the jaunt 
conscious. And when he comes out, it, even though it was instantaneous, when he comes out, he's, he's a raving lunatic. And he ends up telling his dad, um, it was a long time, or it was as long as ever. Um, just very ominous uh, a way to end the story, and it kind of ends right on that. So you kind of like take what he meant by that. It was like instantaneous, but I believe he, it felt like he was in there for lifetimes and lifetimes, and who knows what happened to him and what he experienced. So it's very open-ended, um, leaves you open to your own interpretation, and it just kind of leaves you very unsettled. So very disturbing story. For number four, we're once again sticking with Skeleton Crew. In case you haven't noticed, there's a lot of good stuff in this short story collection. Uh, so this one was called Kane Rose Up. Now, this story is only eight pages long, if you can even consider it a story uh, for whatever you can fit in in eight pages. But it was extremely disturbing, and I'll tell you why. It's eight pages of you delving into the mind of someone right when they're on the brink of committing a terrible act of violence. So uh, it's about a, a kid at his college dorm, and it's basically him walking through the concourse, walking up to his dorm room, and taking out his automatic rifle or whatever type of gun it was, and uh, setting it up in his window and just opening fire on the concourse or the, you know, the, uh, the grounds of his university. Um, something that happens in everyday life um, that we've all heard about and it's real in that sense which is why it's it's scary and you know just to be able to kind of be behind the method to the madness of uh, of somebody who's thinking like that is very disturbing to me and um, you know it's a quick little read eight pages but uh, it's it's interesting Number five, once again, in Skeleton Crew, the last one from Skeleton Crew, I promise we'll get to some of the other collections soon, uh, is a story called Survivor Type. So this story is about a gentleman who is stranded on an island, kind of like the movie Castaway, if you've seen that. Um, he's by himself, and he decides that in order to stay alive, because he's starving and he's got nothing to eat, he's going to start eating himself. So he starts cutting off certain parts of his body. I think he starts with like his foot um, and eventually just keeps getting carried away and eats himself. That's the gist of the story. It's as messed up as it sounds. And uh, that's why it's disturbing. Uh, it's self cannibalism basically. And uh, just some really wild stuff. Number six, we're gonna go to his first short story collection, Night Shift, to a story called Graveyard Shift. So this story is about um, a bunch of workers from a textile mill who are tasked with uh, staying one weekend and cleaning the basement. Uh, when they get down there and they start cleaning everything up, uh, they discover that there it has been overrun by these giant rats and basically there's a entire ecosystem going on down there in order to uh, keep these rats alive and, and ha have them flourish and be down there for so long. Um, so the story goes from there. Uh, they're basically battling these giant rats and people are getting eaten and, and, uh, just some pretty dark stuff in, in that short story. Um, it's one of his better ones. One of, it's one of his more well-known short stories, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great story. There's a lot of good stuff in Night Shift, but that's one to check out for sure. Number seven, we're going to go to Nightmares and Dreamscapes. And there's a story in this one called, You Know They Got a Hell of a Band. And basically, it is about a couple on a road trip or just traveling across the country. And they decide to take a shortcut, a classic horror trope, obviously. Um, and they come across this small town called Rock and Roll Heaven. And the girl the wife or girlfriend is very weary about this she wants to just get back to the main highway obviously and the husband is intrigued and he decides let's go into town and let's see what this is all about when they get in there it, they end up going to a diner and they start getting a little suspicious because everyone in the diner starts looking like or resembling uh old dead celebrities um they come later to realize like after a while they try and get out of the town and uh and they can't. And um, once they become trapped in this town, uh, they basically realize that it's like some sort of 
purgatory, if you want to put it that way, that they're never going to get out of, where there's just this rock and roll concert that they claim in this story, like some songs can last for years. So again, it's it's disturbing to me because it's another one of those situations where um, you're stuck in some sort of like purgatory or hell for all of eternity. And uh, just the thought of that is is very disturbing and just a situation nobody would ever want to be in. So it's a story to check out in Nightmares and Dreamscapes for sure. For number eight, we're going to go to Everything's Eventual. And there's a story in this one called The Road Virus Heads North. So similar situation from the last story we talked about here where um, you're just getting stuck into some sort of everlasting um, hellish situation. So basically, a gentleman who is driving home stops at a garage sale and purchases a painting that he seems to enjoy. Um, but as he's driving home and he's looking at the painting, he sees some of the details of the painting are, are beginning to change. So he's a little unsettled by this. They're changing in, in weird ways. Uh, so he decides to just stop, pull over, and throw it out. He throws it into a garbage bin. When he gets home, that painting is sitting above his mantle for some reason. Uh, so basically, uh, he is getting haunted by this painting, uh, apparently. And um, again, it's one of those stories that leaves you very open-ended and and you're kind of um, left with your own interpretation of it. Um, so, you know, any situation where you're you're obtaining an object or or you're getting haunted by some sort of spirit or something like that, that you're just helpless to, you have no way of getting out of it, is is always disturbing to me. Number nine is from the collection The Bazaar of Bad Dreams, and it was a story called Mile 81. Uh, this story's always stuck with me. You kind of know a short story's good because... There's, you read so many of them, so a lot of them you you forget pretty quickly, but this is one that's always stuck in my head, especially when I'm, I'm driving past rest stops that look abandoned. So that's kind of the premise of it. Mile 81 is a abandoned rest stop that's all boarded up, and uh, a kid, uh, kids, or a kid goes there um, to drink and party and things like that, because it's just a spot to, to do that. So a kid is kind of hanging out inside this abandoned uh, rest stop when a old car station wagon pulls up and just kind of stops outside. Um, doesn't look like anybody gets out, so he's kind of observing this weird occurrence. Um, then a, another car pulls off the highway to to a good Samaritan, I guess, to uh, to help see what's going on with this car. And um, as he gets close to the car, he kind of is consumed by it, um, if that makes sense. Um, he literally gets absorbed by this car. Um, and anyone who tries to get close to it, this is what happens. It's later revealed that the car is an extraterrestrial life form um, that has come to Earth and has just taken the form of a station wagon, as weird as that is, just to feed on human beings or animals or whoever gets close to it. Pretty weird stuff. Uh, but if you're a Constant King reader, you know he is pretty weird. Uh, just... It's a fun story. This story has stuck with me, but it also um, is is a little disturbing as well. So it's one to check out in Bizarre Bad Dreams. For number 10, and the last one we're going to discuss here, we're going back to just after sunset, and there's a story called Stationary Bike. Uh, this one is a weird one. It's one of the more weirder stories I I've read. Um, so he, uh, someone who is trying to lose weight, basically buys a stationary bike to try and work out, sets it up in his basement. And as he's riding, he kind of starts to experience these states of trance um, when he's riding the bike. He ends up painting a mural on the wall in front of him so he can act like or, or feel like he's, he's actually riding somewhere when he's riding. Um, this mural ends up becoming almost like a real world. He rides his bike and at one point he was like literally in this other dimension if you want to put it that way and like talking to uh, construction workers. So it was just really weird in that sense and it was like the construction workers played like some sort of um, uh, they were like an example of of his body, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, this one was pretty hard to grasp. I, I just always thought um, this story was disturbing in 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 a sense. Uh, it was always a little unsettling to me. So um, it's still a good story to read. Check it out just after sunset. There's still plenty of stuff 
uh, in this novel as well. Thanks for checking out my video of the 10 most disturbing Stephen King short stories. If you love Stephen King, which is the primary focus of my channel, uh, please subscribe, like the video, and we'll keep making them for you.